all in the uh, in the World Cup this year. But the Swiss knew when he won the World Championship, he was a man in form with a chance of doing well in the World Championship on home soil. And it was a good move as far as they're concerned because here he is now opening up a tremendous gap. He's kept his form exactly right. He's not bothered really with the busting a gut, changing up and down the uh, roads of Europe to ride the rest of the series. He's trained particularly for this, this race today and he seems to have paid off at the moment. But still, we've got uh, just under two laps to go. Keep your fingers crossed. The Grunendahl is his way down. That's a lap rider trying to do a kamikaze act into the bankings of the barriers. Bate Vable in third spot looking quickly over his shoulder to see what uh, what's happening behind him. And we're back then with uh, Nita Runkel. He's another chap who doesn't get much uh, in the way of Christmas presents, by the way. He's born on the 21st of December in 1966, so, well, much in birthday present. He's one of the poor people who gets the combined one. Be a nice uh, celebration here as far as he's concerned. Not long after his birthday then, 1966. Maybe he's from 29 years of age, if my arithmetic is correct. He's one of those consistent riders, anyway, with uh, Jan Rice's word perfect team. He's always sort of get himself placed in the top 20 in most of the events he took part in, but uh, never really an out and out road uh, victor. Grunendahl, and now we're taking a man here. Grunendahl, the junior champion of 1989, beginning to get further away from uh, Bait Webel. And that's Bate Vavel of Switzerland. And he's going to have to watch it, I think, by the way, because Adley van der Poel was beginning to close up. He looked very determined on the front that front. He was towing quite a few people along with him. And Adley's got enormous stamina. And uh, he might well be trying to close that gap. We had a quick look then at one of the, the lap riders. He looks so clean, doesn't he, this fella? You think he's sort of gone through a shower on the way round and sprayed him down with those uh, those Karsha spray guns. There's nothing about it by being out of the, the muck and rubbish that comes up off the wheels, then you've got to keep yourself nice and clean. Of course, they go back to some rather decent showers when they finished and get themselves all cleaned up, unlike the days when cyclocross started. I remember riding a race out in Hedeford, the uh, Gannett cyclocross. We used to get changed in tin baths, or washed in tin baths in a farmyard. We're going down there with my old mate Mike Earp, who's not very well at the moment, wishing the best of luck. But uh, these are the good conditions that cyclocross riders revel in. We wish the best of luck, lads. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's see where he goes. Oh, that's Pontoni fighting his bike. There again, see that front wheel? That's the spinach wheel I'm talking about. Thin spokes. God, he says, why don't you put your hand between that lot? I might get sort of sliced up like a bacon slicer. Dieter Runkel looking like he's out for a Sunday afternoon ride to the woods, just leaving the rest absolutely out in his wheels. The tracks then that he's making are the ones the rest will follow, but they are having difficulty now spotting him because the old little thing here, out of sight, out of mind. Suddenly the last it goes in cyclocross and you're struggling. See how he's sitting back over that back wheel to get plenty of grip. I think on the handlebars so he can get a nice line. You, you mustn't drop that front wheel into too big a rut, by the way. If you get in, if you see ruts coming, you try and stay out of the big thick ruts because if it goes one way and your back wheel goes the other, then it's uh, elbow over apex and you're lying there and the rest come up to you and have gone past. But there's a good distance now opening up as far as he's concerned. He looks back across the course. It's only on the hairpins you can actually look to see what you're doing. And bit by bit, then he's going away from uh, Grunendahl and uh, the Swiss here having a tremendous, tremendous World Championships.
Look at that gap. It's absolutely opened up. Grandal coming through in Selsa South on the 15th of January. He finished in ninth spot in the World Cup, and that uh, took him to eighth overall in the World Cup series. But this man we're looking at now, not in the, the top 20 in the World Cup at all this year. He really has set his uh, season around winning the, the World Championship, got himself selected by being the, uh, the Swiss champion, and he's just going away from the rest like they were, they were stuck in the gooey mud. Grandal on his way down, and just behind there, that's the Hungarian rider, Peter Moll. He looked at the green, thought he might be the Irishman. In fact, it's Peter Moll. The Irish rider is Joe Bar number 68. And then the, the Hungarian promptly stepped off his bike, or his bike stepped from under him as we switched the, the camera shot. But I'll show you how difficult it is for the less experienced riders. And he's been completely lapped now, 10 minutes back on our leader, Dieter Runkel. And in then, as he goes through, the big marquee. What a place that is in the background there. They've got, by the way, over the weekend, 13,000 versa, that's the sausages, 7,000 servalats, that's the other sort of sausage that they were the flatter meat inside. They've got uh, 8,000 half flasks of wine as well to consume. Uh, to consume. There's a very special cyclocross coffee called Café Queer, uh, or Café Queer, and there are 5,000 of those to be consumed as well. So the Dutchman going through, and certainly there'll be some celebrations there at the moment with the Swiss lying first and third. Going in then to the last lap of the race, 47 minutes of racing. Well, they lose a the race for an hour, so we're probably going to be a fraction under 47. And uh, Grandal got himself well away. That's the fellow in the orange jersey up at the right-hand side of your, your screen. The average speed, 18.87 kilometres per hour. Will decide, I think, that uh, provided he keeps his cool here, he's in for the bronze, but um, he's 50 seconds back on the overall lead. That's first, second, and third gone through. Let's see where Van der Poel's got at the moment because he was leading the charge to that back group. He worked his way through very carefully indeed, and uh, I wonder if he can get himself a third spot. There he is in the distance at the moment. So a determined effort, but on this last lap, I think the deficit is too much to close down. Yep, lap rise, out you go. The last charge then on these three riders on your screen to try and get up to the bronze medal position, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So out there on the uh, race at the moment, this man leading a hot uh, track to finish. We're going to take a short uh, break. To Today at 4.30 p.m. on Eurosport. The Cross-Country Skiing World Cup on Eurosport. They say they're the toughest sportsmen around. Cross-Country Skiing, stamina, strength and skill. Eurosport brings you the Cross-Country World Cup in its entirety. A four-month trek around the world for one of the hardest-earned trophies around. The Cross Country Ski World Cup from Lati, Finland, tonight at 6.30 p.m. on Eurosport. Eurosport, live. 
Welcome back to Eurosports coverage of the World Cyclocross Championship from Eschenbach in uh, Switzerland. The Swiss going absolutely bananas here uh, with their riders dominating this, the Open Championship. And the man we're looking at now then, uh, Dieter Runkel on the final lap of the race, just making a swift change of his bike as he sets off to, in towards the finish. His teammate uh, back in third spot at the moment, Blake Babel, and in between those two Swiss, neatly sandwiched, uh, is Richard Grunendahl, and the rest really just desperately trying to have a chance, perhaps, and snapping the bronze medal. But it looks like, as far as he's concerned here, uh, Dieter Runkel, a medal is there awaiting him at the end of this uh, championship. He timed his season exactly right, has his uh, Scott rider, and he's never looked uh, in trouble all the way through. We just keep our fingers crossed that uh, nothing happens to him on the way through now in towards the, the finish. He's got a lot of experience in cyclocross because, like many of these riders, started back as a, a junior. He took a second place in uh, the championship in Leeds behind uh, Daniel Pontoni. So he's, he's been around for a long time now. Many of these riders having to learn the skills of this sport and build up their technique. And Dieter Runkel finished in the second spot in Leeds in Great Britain. Uh, just behind Daniel Pontoni, who's been really out of the frame today. Richard uh, uh, Grunendahl here, as we look now into the second spot at the moment. Another fellow that's uh, been around for a short while because he's really spent his time also moving his way through the junior ranks. He won the junior championship in 1989 in, uh, in Pont Chateau, and he's been always there or thereabouts in the World Cup series so far. Blake Ravel was the man we saw swiftly there on the screen, who happens to be in third spot at the moment. Perhaps more known in the uh, summer season for his uh, performances on uh, cyclocross, but again, sorry, in, in, in mountain biking, but again, a, a very experienced uh, cyclocross rider. So, Dieter Runkel mixing the road with cyclocross, now deciding to specialise on getting this world championship. He really has done a tremendous job here, and I think uh, the Swiss are going to be more than happy with this one. I'm looking back down over the years and the last... Uh, a professional champion of the world for Switzerland that was the great rider Albert Zweifel in 1986 at Lembeek when he beat Pascal Rechard at the Swiss rider has also won things like the Tour of Switzerland and the Tour de France and yes these riders not only take part in the winter sport they're great when it comes to riding on the road as well. Uh, Roger Honiger there, the Swiss camera picking that up, but just up in front of him, that's Adli van der Poel, so it's Honiger and van der Poel trying to get across the third spot at the moment and uh, that there, number 14, is uh, Van Sandfleet, so perhaps as, uh, they're not going to get amongst the medals. Eric Van uh, Eric, Eric, uh, de Vlamik is already putting his walking shoes on and walking back to Belgium. He said he thought they'd get a medal in somewhere in the Championship. They haven't done so, but perhaps he might just about say, well, Sandfleet got us a ride in the top ten. We'll be happy uh, with that one. Peter Stevenson looks like he's just been lapped here at the moment, the ex-British amateur champion by our leader who's now on the, uh, the final lap of this race. Yes, that's Peter Stevenson, the amateur champion, not last year, the year before. Lives uh, in Belgium most of the time, racing over there. Also takes part in the British scene as well, but he's just been lapped by Honiger. That means there's some 10 minutes between the two of them. At least we've got a chance of seeing the Union Jack in full flight. And if you didn't hear part of my Early commentary, just let me tell you that Roger Hammond uh, took 6th in the Esquire race yesterday, Jamie Norfolk took 11th, and uh, Stuart Brunt 15th. That was a great performance as far as we are concerned, to get three riders in the top 15. And if you look back then over the years, that these riders do progress through, at Dieter Runkel here, on his way now to win this championship, who took uh, a second place in the Amateur Championships in 1992 at Leeds. It takes a long time before you work your way through into top ranks. So it's all experience, the rest of these riders are concerned. And it's paying off. Look at him, he's absolutely saluting and waving to the crowd. It's not the sort of thing you normally see in cyclocross, but he's over the moon with this one. He's making it look oh so simple. Quickly shouldering that bike, his arm going up. It's, this virtually is a lap of honour for this Swiss rider. And the crowd here, even those who come from far and wide outside the Borders of Switzerland are applauding his efforts because it has been an absolutely world-class performance, as you'd expect to be the world champion. But Grunendahl, they're being battered in his eardrums by the bells, the cowbells, which have rung all around the course. And I somehow think that by the time this man here, uh, Dieter Runkel, gets the finish, the rest of those cowbell 
wearing, uh, uh, wielding spectators will have worked their way through.